So now it's time to look at a case study for virtual uh, networks in uh, v uh, in uh, vSphere. So we've looked at uh, IP uh, networks, we've looked at uh, link aggregation groups, uh, we've looked at uh, NIC teaming and uh, load balancing uh, capabilities. We've also seen uh, some of the pros and cons and uh, some of the design options that one has. So with that in mind, we will whiteboard a case study which uh, basically states that the customer is moving away from fiber channel and is looking to move towards IP storage. And again, in parenthesis, it says uh, iSCSI and, and, and uh, NFS. So one of the questions we probably need to ask uh, the customer is to make a decision around if they're going to use iSCSI or NFS because it's uh, very rarely that one would want to use iSCSI and NFS uh, unless it's a legacy kind of an implementation, but uh, we're going to ignore that. Uh, modern arrays uh, would support NFS and would also support uh, iSCSI, but from a design perspective and uh, especially if you are putting in uh, something that you want to support uh, easily and you want to support uh, operationally in a very uh, robust uh, manner, then it's good to stay with one or the other. iSCSI gives you block storage. NFS does not give you block storage, but it's uh, better aligned with uh, data stores and uh, better aligned with uh, ESXi. iSCSI basically transfers your FC fiber channel storage model into an iSCSI model. So from an operational perspective, uh, your storage uh, team might be more inclined to support iSCSI than they would be inclined to support NFS because their experience has been with a uh, fiber channel. Uh, probably moving away from uh, fiber channel is a difficult situation for most uh, storage organizations as well. And uh, even the implementation of iSCSI is something that they are uncomfortable with. So you have to keep this in mind. Um, I'm just trying to bring out the various factors I've seen in practice. Uh, there's nothing uh, right or wrong about it. It's uh, simply that uh, if someone has been accustomed to using a fiber channel network, which is a lossless network, and they're told that they are going to be using now iSCSI arrays, or they or somebody has made a determination they're going to use iSCSI arrays, then uh, that becomes a very difficult thing for them to understand because they know that uh, TCP IP uh, is not uh, really lossless. And so, we as network uh, engineers need to speak to our counterparts in uh, storage and ensure that they understand that while lossless is not really possible completely with uh, TCP, but a design of a good IP storage network will actually solve that problem uh, for them. Uh, security is a must. Well, with all the uh, activity we've seen uh, with hackers and uh, different organizations getting uh, hacked, uh, security is always a must. Now, with uh, NFS, uh, you have some uh, interesting uh, possibilities because you can actually encrypt on the wire. Uh, with iSCSI, while you can uh, use uh, some uh, CHAP-based uh, uh, authentication, uh, but in the end, uh, really what we are seeing that, uh, right now is that uh, modern storage arrays uh, actually allow and uh, have very easy ways of doing uh, encryption uh, right on the storage array. So if we invoke the uh, familiar uh, Ivan uh, Pepelniak of uh, ipspace.net, and I highly recommend that you actually look at his website, that's ipspace.net. Net, one of his uh, key design constructs is to say that the uh, complexity should ride actually on the edge of the network. The uh, network sh itself should not be uh, complex. And the example he uses, and uh, I use it all the time in uh, my discussions, is that of Skype. Skype is a very uh, complex uh, application, but it rides on the internet. In the end, the internet, while it is complex, is a routed network. So as long as you keep the complexity out of the network, because the network, the uh, internet, does not know anything about Skype, 
But Skype works all the time. The Skype works at the top of Mount Everest. It works at the bottom of the ocean as long as you have IP access to the internet. So the point I want to make here is that when we talk about uh, IP storage and iSCSI and so on, modern arrays have the ability to do complex things. They're able to actually replicate logical units uh, which are basically logical uh, disks or uh, data stores in case they actually recognize uh, the VMware construct of a VMFS uh, file system. They're able to do this stuff right on the storage array itself. So it's a big boon to actually use modern storage arrays because they recognize virtualization. They recognize the VMware uh, file system. Uh, they uh, recognize the uh, requirement of being able to replicate without going over to ESXi and without traversing the network to actually create a replica of a given VMFS data store. So if all this traffic is not then on the network and is only within the storage array, uh, security becomes a little bit less of an issue you of course need to have access controls on your storage array so people are not able to replicate uh, and uh, copy things off over o uh, over to um, any device that they can actually plug in into their storage array uh, but then if you keep in mind that security is a must uh, and uh, we are able now with NFS version 4.0 to actually encrypt the uh, traffic on the fly. Reliability and redundancy are always there in uh, every requirement. Uh, the real difficulty is actually to find out how much reliability when uh, the, the customer wants and uh, then to provide the appropriate level of redundancy. As you know applications uh, range from uh, critical to the other extreme of not being critical at all. So when you're designing IP storage or when you're designing uh, the uh, network for the virtual machine traffic, keep that in mind. Don't over design. Reliability is uh, quite easily achieved, I think, with uh, ESXi. And as long as you stick with uh, basic uh, operational simplicity uh, and keep your design simple, keeping operations in mind, you will be just fine. Uh, the case study also states that the customer requires us to focus uh, on the network. So the uh, assumption here is that uh, somebody who knows uh, what they're doing has uh, already uh, designed the uh, VMware virtual uh, infrastructure environment and uh, our responsibility is to uh, make sure that the physical network is designed appropriately. Now we have the tools that we need, we have the language that we need to be actually able to talk to intelligently with the folks that designed the virtual infrastructure network. We can we know about NIC teaming, we know about load balancing options, uh, we know the issues that ESXi has uh, with uh, NFS, uh, we understand how it uses uh, iSCSI and we understand its implications on the physical network. So now we can have a really good meaningful, robust conversation with our counterparts on the virtual network side. Thankfully, the client has made a decision to use uh, vSphere uh, 6.x that is obviously huge because it uh, simplifies things for us. We now have the ability to use multiple link aggregation groups, which we know we can then connect up to a different uh, set of uh, VPC uh, switches, Nexus switches, so we can use uh, virtual, uh, virtual uh, port channels. And uh, it gives us flexibility on the physical net, uh, network side and reliability and redundancy is uh, almost uh, automatic when you use uh, VPC in uh, Cisco Nexus uh, networks. So with this, we are now going to switch uh, to the whiteboard. Uh, things to keep in mind is that we are going to focus on IP storage and uh, security and we are going to focus on the network with the assumption that uh, vSphere 6.0 uh, 
uh, is being uh, not with the assumption but with the confirmation actually in this case that vSphere 6.0 is going to be uh, used uh, case studies and uh, actual designs can sometimes be uh, subjective uh, subjective so it's really important to take a look at uh, the various options that are actually available uh, to us so I'm going to write down some of those uh, points uh, in that we saw in a case study. So one was around IP storage, uh, the other was around uh, security was uh, very important uh, for this organization. They said uh, focus on the network and they said that uh, ESX uh, I 6.0 is uh, confirmed. So with this in mind, let's take a, a quick look at the possibilities that exist for us uh, when we use IP storage. Now, the customer has not really talked about if uh, they have decided upon uh, NFS uh, versus uh, iSCSI. So, in my view, one of the discussions that one needs to have is uh, whether they want to use iSCSI or uh, NFS. Uh, modern arrays actually support this uh, a lot. Uh, I would be hard pressed to say whether one should use iSCSI or, or NFS. Uh, they are both uh, very uh, popular and actually fit quite well. Uh, iSCSI tends to be much more uh, acceptable to organizations that are moving from a uh, fiber channel. Uh, other organizations don't have that difficulty and they are quite readily uh, uh, moving on to uh, NFS, uh, especially with NFS 4.1 support in ESXi uh, 6. Uh, uh, X. Um, NFS is very interesting because uh, if you're able to create a data store in uh, NFS, in an F N NFS uh, volume, then you're able to uh, actually look at the I.O. patterns and things of that nature uh, pretty nicely. And we're going to make an assumption that we are going to use uh, iSCSI uh, storage. So that implies that we need an independent IP storage network. This is good practice because remember we are coming from the fiber channel world which is uh, lossless. We want to make sure that there are no uh, TCP uh, slow starts. Let's write this again. TCP slow starts. We want to be sure that there is no congestion and that we lose packets and TCP has to go into slow start mode because that would really cause problems with our IP network. So because of that we are going to have a dedicated IP storage network. Now that brings up the idea of the TCP IP stack. We now have with ESXi 6 the availability to, to actually create a TCP IP stack uh, for iSCSI. So now things are looking really good. Let's start drawing them out. So what we are saying is that we are going to use iSCSI software adapter. The uh, new CPUs are so fast that uh, the overhead is uh, kind of uh, not nothing to worry about. We're going to use the iSCSI software adapter. Uh, we will uh, define uh, multiple iSCSI VM kernels. Uh, always a good number. Uh, it's always a good idea to stick with uh, a factor of two here. So we will put in four. So it's iSCSI 1, iSCSI uh, 0, 2, and 3. And we should define uh, VM kernel port groups that actually support iSCSI. Now, in this case, uh, even though I may not have the availabil availability of uh, four physical NICs, I don't know if in the future, I may actually get four NICs. That would be wonderful. So I design from the outset a design that puts in four iSCSI port groups and that allows me 
multipathing IO. I can keep things really simple. I use uh, four physical NICs if I have them, but if in the if their four NICs are in the future, I can actually say iSCSI 0 and iSCSI 2 use maybe two of my NICs. So I would only use VM NIC uh, 0 here and I would use VM NIC uh, 0 here. And for this, I would use uh, VM NIC uh, 1 and VM NIC 1. So for now, I can get away with two physical NICs, VM NIC 0 and VM NIC 1. But I've kept my op options open for the future with uh, four NICs. Okay, and I'm able to still get my multiple paths and everything else like that. And yes, I know that at this time I will not get as good multipathing as I will with four NICs, but that's the breaks. Okay, so that's how I would look to do iSCSI. Now, of course, you have the ability to have. Uh, the logins uh, use a chap if your security organization is uh, really fanatical about it there's no reason not to do it the only thing to look at is to make sure your i scuzzy array supports it that's all there is to it okay nothing to worry about because uh, you really don't have an encryption on the fly uh, you just basically have uh, authentication uh, for login to that iSCSI array so let's look at deterministic if I have port group 1 and I have a port group uh, 2 uh, this is using uh, VM NIC uh, 0 as uh, active and it's using uh, VM NIC 1 as standby and this is doing it in the reverse way where VM NIC uh, 0 is uh, standby and VM NIC 1 is uh, active now things become really interesting as long as everything is working fine well obviously there is no problem different NICs are being uh, used but let's consider the fact as to what happens now and which is what you have to be careful about in terms of being deterministic is that if VM NIC 0 goes down traffic in port group 1 will switch to VM NIC 1 well this is all well and good except that port group 2 is using VM NIC 1 as active and if the amount this is the key if the amount of traffic is such that adding the traffic of PG1 so PG1 and the traffic of PG2 it may overload that NIC and you may get congestion so look at this in a deterministic manner make sure you know how much traffic is flowing across those NICs before you make a design decision to do this it's much better to have this simple method of NIC teaming in place but make sure that when there is a failover it all still works so your design has not only to look at when things are working fine and you just throw in a few virtual NICs for standby make sure you know how much traffic is flowing and make sure you know in a failure situation when the failover happens what is the situation then and that you need to make sure you are not overloading the physical NICs and you don't get congestion you don't get uh, TCP slow starts that's going to really cause a problem so please keep things simple is I guess the first thing I would say uh, use NIC teaming in very simple ways use load based teaming that actually works very well and both these options keep your upstream network simple for IP storage load based teaming works very well and I would highly recommend that you use it and this allows you 
to at your access layer switches keep things very simple so that at the next level up you're then able to do DC routing or uh, routing to your uh, spine networks assuming the access uh, switches are working as uh, leaf uh, switches it allows you to get into modern data center networking and uh, away from a three tier DC design and into a routed data center with leaf spine networking where you don't have these bandwidth issues to worry about because the number of hops and the bandwidth between devices on that network is consistent and is constant. So we are now back at our uh, case study where we looked at designing for IP storage. Uh, we made a selection for iSCSI uh, with the idea that the uh, storage organization who's familiar with Fiber Channel is likely to be more inclined to use iSCSI, it's block storage, just like Fiber Channel storage is. Uh, we looked at the various uh, security aspects. Uh, when we use iSCSI, you can use uh, CHAP uh, for uh, authentication, reliability and redundancy. We looked at the uh, various uh, link aggregation groups and the uh, ability to uh, specify different types of uh, NIC teaming. We completely focused on the network as was uh, requested by the uh, customer and we used all the capabilities of uh, vSphere uh, 6 uh, that we were asked to use. So with that we conclude our discussion of the case study. Design is always subjective. Design is always based on the person that is uh, designing and uh, that design is very often based on that person's uh, comfort factor with uh, different uh, options as well as their experience in the past. No designer wants to design something that is uh, risky. Uh, most people are looking to implement uh, implementing uh, something and designing a solution that actually they know is actually going to work. Uh, but the, uh, then again things happen and so make sure in your design post implementation you have some plans to monitor even for a short period of time to make sure that your design is actually functioning as designed in real life so make sure you have the ability to uh, keep track of what's going on make sure your uh, management and monitoring uh, probes are in place make sure you're gathering data during the initial implementation and then if you need to tweak things uh, in your design that's okay and I would highly recommend that in your design you make sure that you have this uh, capability uh, and uh, proposal to your uh, customer that says that uh, for the next uh, uh, one or two weeks after implementation that there would be some uh, additional monitoring that will be done to ensure that everything is working fine. No reasonable customer has an issue with that. So make sure that uh, ongoing operation is uh, designed into your design.